Hey everybody, I'm Amy from Buddy Talk by Amy and this is your prenatal power workout. This workout is great for anyone in any trimester of pregnancy as long as you have been cleared by your doctor for exercise during pregnancy and you listen to your body and work to your level. I'll talk more about what that means for where you are and of course, as always, I'm gonna give you lots of different options. All you need for this workout are a set of weights and a mat. Are you ready? Let's do it. Go ahead and just roll those shoulders back. We're gonna start just getting in touch with our alignment and our posture and a little bit of breathing. Don't worry, it won't be very long. Then we'll get to the good stuff. But as you probably know, in pregnancy, our posture gets off, our alignment gets off, and there are just things we need to think about. There's not much we can do about it in the moment, but if you can think about stacking your ears over your shoulders, shoulders over that rib cage, rib cage over your pelvis, again, that may be a little different depending on where you are in your pregnancy. I'm not currently pregnant, but I certainly remember. Sometimes we're here, sometimes we're here, but trying to really think about the hip bones and the ribs as much as you can, aligning, and then also stacking those hips over your knees, over your ankles. So with that, making sure that we don't have too much of that rib flare, trying to close the core. And then let's put our hands on either side. Let's start with that TA breathing or diaphragmatic breathing. We wanna do a big inhale. And as we inhale, we expand all the way around through our belly, through our sides, through our back. We let that pelvic floor drop and relax. And then as we exhale, everything comes in and up. So you can almost think that you're hugging the baby. So big inhale, expand, trying to maintain that good posture. Exhale, in and up. Now, a couple more on your own as you're listening to me. This is not something we have to think about through every breath, through every exercise, but it is super important to creating that good stability, especially when we're adding weight, we're adding those weights especially if we're adding a little bit of impact, which we may do with power, you'll have that option. And just as we get into the further stages of our pregnancy, we get more load, we really wanna maintain that deep core stability, pelvic floor stability, and it also comes into play in the postpartum period. So just keep that in mind. Of course, I have prenatal core that covers that more in depth. Now let's go into a little march. Just often like to start prenatal and postnatal workouts with that. So it just gets you in that mindset of, I'm getting that core stability, I'm keeping my core engaged, and I'm gonna have that awareness of my posture and of having that support throughout this workout. Now with this workout, let's roll one shoulder at a time. With this workout, you're gonna have your, round one is your back to basics. So it's a lot of your basic upper body push and pull, lower body squat, hinge, lunge. And then your second round, we'll take those same exercises and we'll add a little bit of power. Let's just shift your weight side to side if that feels okay for you. Now, power is totally fine in pregnancy. You can do things like swings or snatches or even higher impact jumping as long as it's appropriate for you, depending on what you've talked about with your healthcare provider, and also as long as you have that good stability and it feels good for you. So if you can maintain that good core control and it feels okay on your joints, then that's totally fine. I know for me, things felt a lot different. Let's take it right here, roll through our back and round it up. Felt a lot different in my first pregnancy than my second. In my second, I really stopped doing high impact stuff. Whew, probably, as soon as that second, but definitely in that third trimester. My first pregnancy, I was able to keep, maintain that good core connection and I felt good doing some higher impact and higher load stuff till the day I delivered, right? So every pregnancy is different, every person is different. So I want you to find what is best for you. If you don't feel like you have that core control and that stability, let's take a deep squat down and then hands behind the head, hinge right here. So let's keep those hands behind. That's gonna give you a nice chest stretch and then drive the hips to the back. Nice back stretch. So do what is best for you and what is appropriate for you. I just wanna give you some options because I know a lot of us stay very active during our pregnancy and we wanna keep doing a lot of the power moves that we have done in the past, but we wanna make sure that we're doing them 
appropriately for pregnancy and that I can give you those cues to have that good form along the way. Let's take it right here, hands on top of the legs and I just want you to do a little standing cat cow. Engaging that core, you may have to take a wider stance, again, depending on where you are in your pregnancy. So a lot of these things I may say, go ahead and round it up right here and let's tap and reach across. So turning your whole body, knees and hips, right? Not upper body isolation, torso twisting, but turning knees and hips with it. So a lot of these moves I'm gonna say, if it feels good for you or if it's appropriate for you, but I also may give you some guidance based on first and second trimester, second and third. I know when we get into that third trimester, especially, it is important to keep in mind that we do have more load in the front and some things one might not feel as good, but if you are someone who maybe is prone to things like prolapse or pelvic floor dysfunction or diastasis recti, you're gonna wanna keep the back to basics low impact version. If you're feeling good and you haven't had any issues in the past, again, if it's right for you, you can add that power, all right? So, things to keep in mind, don't overthink it, just do what is right for you according to your discussions with your healthcare provider and what feels good for you in this workout. All right, so go ahead, we're gonna grab one heavy weight, so up to you. I'm actually gonna go kettlebell on this, you can go kettlebell or dumbbells. We're gonna be working with both today, but we're gonna just do a basic squat. So depending on where you are, it might be good to hold the kettlebell below. If you wanna rack those dumbbells, if that feels better for you or goblet squat here, I'm gonna start up top and then maybe bring it down. But we've got 40 seconds of work followed by 20 seconds of rest. Let's do it core engaged. So lift up on that pelvic floor, make sure you're breathing. Here we go. So this is more what we would call like our active breathing. We're keeping the core engagement. We're keeping that awareness. Things like squats sometimes can be really helpful to, I'm gonna set this down for a minute, on the way up to really connect with that core and lift on that pelvic floor, but making sure that you have good engagement throughout the entirety of the movement, right? And breathe. If you're just letting it all go, not having any stability here, that's a lot of pressure down on that pelvic floor, but if you have that good engagement, then it should feel pretty good. We got five, four, three, two, and one. Catch your breath. All right, now we're gonna take it to a bent over row. So two dumbbells. Certainly if you need extra stability, you can put one hand on a chair or on the wall or a knee. Otherwise, let's go for two. Let's go bent over row, shoulders back. Hinge it here, here we go. Now, important thing to remember, you do wanna make sure that you're keeping that heart rate, that intensity level, not as, at a certain number, but where you can carry on a conversation. So if you can talk back to me, then you're okay. If you're starting to feel so out of breath that you can't have a conversation, you might be getting that heart rate a little bit too high. Again, you know your body, you know what's right for you, but if you're starting to feel like you're getting breathless, take a break, hit pause, drop your weights, whatever you need to do, breathe, especially when we get into those power rounds. Last one, and relax. All right, team, now we are taking it to a chop. So this is core work. We're gonna keep that good engagement. You can keep it close to your body, or you can extend it out. I'm gonna go one dumbbell, but we're pivoting knees and hips. So again, it's not isolated. We don't want that full twist during pregnancy, but we can get full body rotational movement. Grab one medium dumbbell. We're gonna keep it here to here, starting with just that. Then we will add on to give you an option to take those arms a little wider. Again, if you feel that pressure out on your pelvic or down on your pelvic floor, here we go, or down, down on your pelvic floor, or pushing out on that abdominal wall if it's feeling uncomfortable, then I want you to keep it close to your body. <sighs> Little rotational movement for obliques and then lots of core stability. If it feels good for you, <sighs> take it here. Bring it up, <sighs> just like that. Up, <sighs> and breathe. So core, again, close chop. Think just hip to shoulder or if you can maintain it here. Yes. Three, 
two, one. Let's switch it. Other side, let's go ahead and jump right into it. So core engage, breathing normally. Here we go. Active breath, hip to shoulder, right through here, or down, and across. So it's already a bit of a power move by nature, but we'll add a little more in our power round. Breathe. Up through here. Those power rounds, we're actually gonna get 30 second intervals and 30 second recovery. I want you to use that recovery to catch your breath and to breathe up. I know sometimes we wanna just keep going, but use it. Three, two, one. All right, team, so back to our kettlebell. Here's what we've got for our power squat. You got a couple of options. Kettlebell down in the center if you can, if it's comfortable for you. We're gonna drop it down and then you can either power up on your toes if you feel like you have that engagement or little jump, then come back up with it. So here, either up on the toes or nice grounded jump, not super high impact, not super high, but let's get it done. So keep that core engaged. Remember we got 30 seconds, here we go. So down, up on the toes, bring it up. Or here, if you've got a dumbbell instead of a kettlebell, that's okay too. You can even just drop that weight down, pick that weight up. If you can't get that low, then I want you just to do it body weight, right? And here, down, that works to engage. Three, two, one and relax, catch your breath. Set that weight to the side. All right, watch me here. This is a fun one. You may wanna go a little bit lighter. We're gonna go with a row on one side, 30 seconds each side. Row and high pull or row and snatch. So watch me here, I'm staggered. Row, high pull, or upright row if that's better for you, or row, snatch. Your snatch, you're pulling up, up against your body if you have space whatever feels better for you, or just keep your regular row. That's an option as well. All right, 30 seconds right, 30 seconds left, a few seconds in between, core engaged, hinge it. Here we go. Row and snatch. Keep it tight. Again, not holding your breath, but keeping that core engagement and power. Again, if it's better for you, high pull, right? Row and up, and here, or here. So we're sneaking in a little hinge, right? And up, and relax. Catch your breath, take it to that other side. If single leg movements don't feel good for you, you can just keep it here, right? If you don't wanna step back, that creates a little more space, but it's totally up to you. Hinge it here, core engaged, lift up, here we go. Row and snatch. Take it here. Connect with your breath to make sure. Right here. And up. Yes, team. We got five, four, three, two, and one. Catch your breath. All right, team, hang on to that one weight. I want you to breathe. Here's what we got. We're gonna add a little bit of power to that chop. You can keep it just like we did, always an option, or turn into the lunge, take it across. Again, I want you to have that good core engagement, and I don't want twisting isolated in the torso. I want your entire body moving through the motion. 30 seconds each side in three, two, one. Turn into it, take it across. Turn in, take it across. Again, if that lunge doesn't feel good for you, just keep it here or hip to shoulder. But here and across. Here and across. Yes, team. I know. Breathe. Hand up. We got five, four, three, two, one. Catch your breath. 
few seconds to breathe. Again, if you're starting to feel too out of breath, like you can't talk back to me, say, hey, Amy, I'm feeling good. Let's take it other side. Here we go. That's when I want you to hit pause or just sit back and watch me do the movement. That's okay too. Remember, I know so many of you love working out hard and feeling strong during your pregnancy and we all need it. We all know we feel better and we're better for it, but you have to listen to your body and not worry about setting any big fitness goals. Last one, and relax. Everybody get a sip of water, even if you don't feel thirsty, because we all need it. Remember during pregnancy, this is not the time to have major goals of I'm gonna get this many workouts in, I'm gonna do this much weight. This is the time to just focus on healthy mom, healthy baby, right? Just staying strong to support your changing body as it's growing. Staying active so you have that good mobility. This type of HIIT training is really important because when we get to labor, it is a HIIT workout. But again, not pushing it. We wanna make sure that we're staying at a level that is right for pregnancy. All right, team, so shake it out. We're going to round two. We are gonna start with a deadlift. So it is that hinge motion. I'm gonna go dumbbells with my deadlift. Our power version of this is a swing. I'm gonna guide you on this. I'm gonna take it to a kettlebell. If you've never done a kettlebell swing, I want you to stick to the deadlift. If you're late in that third trimester, I would say stick to the deadlift. It was not comfortable for me. We do wanna be a little extra careful, but you do what's best for you. But let's start with a hinge pattern with our deadlift. Grab those weights, shoulders back, nice good posture, core engaged. Here we go. So you're hinging forward, but mostly you're driving those hips to the back, right? And let me tell you something, this hinge pattern is so important to new mom life, right? Really life in general, but especially life in, with kids. You're either bending down to pick the baby up out of the car seat, out of the crib, off the floor, to change them, whatever it is. And then when you get to my stage where your kid's a little older, you're picking up the toys, picking up the Legos. So, so important, this exercise, relax. All right, team, so dumbbells or kettlebell, we're gonna go curl and press. Same thing, I'm gonna go dumb, I'm gonna go kettlebell on this, curl and press. You can go dumbbells when we add a little power. We're actually, let's go dumbbells because that may be a little more comfortable with a baby bump. So let's go dumbbells if you got them. If you only have a kettlebell, that's okay too. But we're gonna do curl and press. So curl, press, in and down. In three, two, one. So curl, let's go hammer press up and then turn them in and take it down. If you want that full Arnold press going all the way around, you can do that too. Or full hammer, up to you, always options, right? In and down, up. If you're starting to feel like you're arching your back, put one foot back for stability here. And down, take it up, and up, down, and down. We got three, two, and one. All right, team, so for your core, we're actually gonna hold one weight. It can be kettlebell or dumbbell, and we're gonna rack it here. We're gonna do a little march, all right? Again, march, super important, that single carry. If you wanna have it down here, you can in march or here, but this is what we do all day long, right? Carrying a baby around the house, to the car, all of it. So really important, we wanna be offset so that core has to work. So 40 seconds each side, we're gonna grab it here. I want you to zip up that core, hug that baby. Here we go. Looks simple, I know, but I promise you it's important. Now, again, if it feels like too much, I want you just to do, we sometimes just call this a farmer's carry, right? Or a suitcase carry. If you're up for it and you wanna try it here and you don't feel like that's adding too much stress, you can be here. You do you. 
somewhere in the middle is usually good for most of us. Get ready, we're gonna switch right into that other side. So switch your weight, whether it's dumbbell or kettlebell. Consider this a little bit of mobility as well and a chance to get that heart rate down before we get into that power phase. Let's do it, here we go. March, march. I know sometimes these feel super easy, but if you have enough weight here, and I encourage you to have something that's at least 10 pounds, because that's what your kiddo is gonna be, but if you have something lighter, that's okay too. I mean, hopefully, baby is not 10 when they're born, but I know some of you, it is. Some of you might be six or seven, eight or nine. But as we get going, right, we feel it a little bit more, but again, so functional, so important. Breathe. Five, four, three, two, one. Did you feel your core? I hope so, I know I did. All right, team, so we are going to take it to our power version of this. Again, if you are comfortable with kettlebell swings, if you were doing them before pregnancy, go for it. Otherwise, I want you to stick with that deadlift, which just looks like this, kettlebell or dumbbell, or if you're late in that third trimester or you're just really not feeling the swing, keep with the deadlift as well. But if you're comfortable with swings, you've been doing them, now is the time to add them in. Just make sure, especially on the up, that you connect with the core and you lift up on that pelvic floor. Roll those shoulders back, hinge it. We got our deadlift. Remember, these are our 30-second rounds. Here we go. Power up. So I know a big thing for me as I got further along in my pregnancies, swings weren't as comfortable because I felt like my baby bump was in the way. Maybe that's you. Switch to that deadlift. You do you. Some people feel like they can't really maintain good core stability or pelvic floor engagement on the upswing. If that's you, switch to that deadlift. It is okay. We got four, three, two, one, and then let it swing and relax. Give yourself a little back stretch. All right, team, we're going back to that curl and press. Catch your breath after that. If you want, again, if you're used to power moves, if you've done a clean before, we get a little power or a push press or both. Otherwise, keep that curl and a press. Let's keep it hammer curl in between here, here, or clean and press. Here we go. Right here. So it's just a little bit of power, right? But again, if that power makes you feel like you're not as in control, especially with that core stability, then just take it here. You're still gonna get a lot of work done, right? We're still getting that power and breathe. Yes, you can. Let's get one more. Right, up. All right, team, here we go. All right, instead of that little march, here's what we got, team. We're gonna take it here. We're gonna go side lunge, knee, side lunge, knee. So you can have that racked here, or you can take it stationary and just push out of it, all right? So we're switching to a side lunge. If the side lunge is not comfortable with you, you just go 30 seconds march. But if we can, a little bit of power, here we go. Side lunge. Now, I know it's a lot of balance, right? So if that doesn't feel good for you, take that kettlebell down instead of racked. We're still getting that core work, right? We are still taking it here and breathe into that hip, push out, last one. How did that feel? That was good for you, let's get the other side. If you're feeling like, oh, my hips didn't really like that, felt like I couldn't keep up, let's take it, march or drop the weight. 30 seconds, other side in three, two, power. Watch those weights. Make sure <laughs> that you don't have weights. <sighs> Sit low, drop it off. Again, you can be here. Balance work as long as you feel comfortable. We don't wanna put ourselves too off balance. But if we can do some very safe, regulated core work, right? With some balance in a safe environment, it's a good way to relax, breathe, to get that core 
engage. All right, team, catch your breath. Here's what we got. Let's grab a sip of water and whew, we're taking it to our last round up top. Sip of water, maybe clean up your weights if you got a mess like me. Remember, we always wanna bend our knees to pick our weights up or drop them down, especially in pregnancy because we already have that pressure on our back. So this, which we also call a ground pickup, is also a really functional move for pregnancy because again, picking those babies up all day long. So we are training for life. How are we feeling, team? If you need a few extra seconds to get that heart rate back down, I want you to take it. Can you talk to me? All right. We're gonna start with a lunge. I want you to watch me. We're gonna stay right leg only, stepping reverse. If the lunge is not right for you, and for some people, especially further along in the pregnancy, single leg movements are not good for them, maybe you've got some sciatica, SI joint pain, whatever it is, then I want you to take it to a squat, all right? Or a plie squat. Leave the lunge out of it. But if you can, we're gonna go with lunge, we're gonna get some triceps, we're gonna get some core. All right, team, grab some heavy weights if you can. I'm gonna go two dumbbells, but it's up to you. Let's roll those shoulders back. We got 40 seconds reversing in three, two, one. So lunge it back, step it up. Yes, you can. And up. Yes, team. And breathe. Bring it up. So you're stepping back on train tracks. What does that mean? That means that we're hip distance apart. Shoulders back, trying to maintain that good engagement. If it starts to feel like much, too much, you can do a little tap back. Just don't get as low. Or again, take it to a squat, right? Breathe, drive it up, down and up. And relax. All right, team, shake it out. Let's get set for that other side. Give your hands a little break if you need it. Give your heart rate a little breather if you need it. Other side lunge. Let's do it. And drive it up. Take your time. I would much rather you get half the amount of lunges and maintain good form that feels good for you that you don't feel off balance. If you need to, you can always set a weight down and grab onto the wall or the couch, a countertop, something sturdy always an option. Again, a little balance work in pregnancy is good. We work that core, but we don't want to be too off balance, right? Safety first. 10 seconds. And breathe. Yes. Last one right here. Whoo. All right, team. Set those weights down. Watch me here. We're going one heavy to medium dumbbell. If it's comfortable for you, I want you to come on your knees. Otherwise, stay up top. We're taking that weight. I like to grab it like this, you can grab it like this. But we're gonna stabilize in our core and we're gonna go triceps overhead. If you have something super light and you wanna go two dumbbells, that works too. But the idea is from this position, we get that hip flexor stretch, which we all need, and we engage that core. So join me down on your mat. You can press those toes in, core engage. Here we go, behind the head. Elbows are in. It's very tempting to want to go out to the side. I want you to bring them here as if they're pointing forward. And again, core engaged. Bring it up, down, and yes. And up. Yes, you can. Are we overarching? Lift up on that pelvic floor, engage that core. Elbows in. Back to basics, super strong. You already have that strength. Let's get stronger. Last one and relax. All right, team, we are coming down onto our side, going into a side plank on our elbows. Now, if you're in further in that third trimester, even second, or you feel like there's too much pressure out on your abs, I want you to stay on your knees. Otherwise, totally fine to lift all the way up, but we're gonna lift and lower. We got 40 seconds, here we go down and up. Again, I think for both my pregnancies, as I got further on, I really preferred those knee side planks because I did sometimes feel the pressure. You wanna stay lifted. Side planks are generally safe. 
in pregnancy, but as we get into that third trimester, sometimes we feel a little extra pushing out. You can also just hold or lift the top leg if that's a better option for you. This works too, great modification. We're gonna upper oblique. We got three, two, one. Swing those legs around to the other side carefully, right? Take it here, get set. We got same thing from here, so you can come all the way up on your feet if you feel good, especially that first or second trimester. Otherwise, maybe bring on those knees up to you. You do you. We got three, two, one. And down. Lift and lower. Wrap everything in right here. Sometimes even just hand on the belly will help you think about that engagement. This is a time that you can do that deep TA breath, release, and lift for that good core stability right through here. Yes, I know. 10 seconds, core all the way through. Five, four, three, two, one. Yes, team. All right, back up onto your feet. Here is what we got, team. We're gonna go no weight on this power lunge. Unless you wanna keep it just your re regular lunge and you wanna add those weights, you can. Otherwise, we're going here, little power. Little jump up. You don't have to do the jump. You can just power up with the knee. Again, core engaged. If that doesn't feel good for you and you wanna just get a little grounded power here, that works too. If you need balance, be next to the wall or something sturdy. But let's get it done for 30 seconds only. Go ahead and get set. Whew. Again, if one single leg moves don't feel good for you, just take it to that power squat. Let's do it, here we go. So either way, if you're jumping, that jump is grounded. Here's what we're not doing, right? We don't need any of that in pregnancy, but we can still get power. Unless you're an athlete and you're used to that, but you can still get the power, connect right through here. Three, two, one. Shake it out, a little burn, right? Lots of heart rate. Get set up for that other side. Again, if you need some balance, you want your power to do here or take it to the squat, whatever is appropriate for you. I'm gonna give you a second or two. Let that heart rate come down. Maybe you need it, maybe you don't, but I know I'm feeling it. Three, two, one, down. You decide how low do you wanna get? What's comfortable for you? Do you wanna just get that power here? Your front leg's gonna feel it. Or do you want more range of motion? What feels good for where you are today? and where you are in your journey, in your pregnancy. I know, power it up, whoo, burn. Second one always burns more, right? Five, four, three, two, one. Catch your breath. Grab a quick sip if you need it, I know I do after that. We're gonna take it down to those knees. Again, if knees are not right for you, you can just go overhead and you can do a little march with those triceps. What we're gonna get here is a little seated squat. So it's a good core move, wrap that core, and glutes and hamstrings. So watch me here while you catch your breath. Sit low, bring it up, or all the way down. So your power comes at the top, wrap it in, lift it up, and let's get those tries. Here we go, behind your head, and again, however you feel like holding the dumbbell. Sometimes I really like it better here. And here, power up, breathe. Really lift up on that pelvic floor, connect with that core. Strong arms, strong upper body. I know you can do it. Take it down, bring it up, take it down. Bring it up. Woo. And relax. Yes, you did, team. All right, since we're here, bring it all the way down. Here's what we're gonna add. Everybody on your knees, and here's why. Clamshell and lift, or 
lift and chill, right? We wanna open up that hip, those glutes are so important in pregnancy and beyond, but let's keep those hips stacked, knees here. Here we go, up. But if it feels better for you to do one and then the other, you can do the clamshell at the bottom and then the lift, whatever keeps you most engaged and feels good for where you are. You can go here and lift or get that power slowly down, right? Power, power can look like a lot of different things, right? And here, yes, three, two, one, stretch it out. Let's take it to that other side. All right, team, same thing. Stack the hips. Your knees do not have to be back here. They're gonna be slightly in front. Open it up and lift, or everything together for 30 seconds. Here we go. And down. Use hand on the belly if that's helpful for you. Right through here. Yes. Bring it up. Right through here. Five seconds. Hip, obliques, and core. Last one. Breathe and relax. Let's stretch out those hips since we're here. Whoo. All right, team, you know what? I love to put swings in at least twice, if not three times. Since this is prenatal, we don't need it too many times, but if you're feeling up for it, if a swing is right for you, come back up onto your feet. Let's get that swing one more time. If that is not right for you, or again, if you're further along and it's not comfortable, I want you just to keep the deadlift. There is no shame in that deadlift. Again, super functional, super important that we stay strong all the way through the back. Let's get 30 seconds, whatever it is for you, core engage, shoulders back. Let's hike it, three, two, one, power. Remember, you do not have to get that kettlebell high. Even just about 45 degrees or lower than chest level, but connect with that core on the top. Lift up on that pelvic floor. Use your breath. Yes, you can right here. All the way up. Woo. We got five, four, three, two, one, and relax. Oh man, you guys, so if this is comfortable for you, you can pedal those feet, stretch your back. Otherwise, I want you to grab onto something sturdy, get that little hamstring stretch. Let's take our time, grab a quick sip of water. While you're doing that, you can do a little side to side or whatever you need to bring that heart rate back down. You did it. Nice work, guys. That was a tough workout for me and I'm not pregnant. So this is a great workout for any stage of your journey where we can incorporate some power. Now, again, pregnancy is a little different in the sense that there are things that we need to modify, especially when it comes to core work or that direct core work and especially depending on how you feel. When we get to postpartum, I don't recommend doing any of that high impact or power or heavy, heavy load within the first several weeks, all right? It's gonna be different for everybody, so I don't like to give you specifics on how many weeks, but certainly in those first six to 12, you are still healing. So if we're still trying to heal that core and heal that pelvic floor and reconnect and restore that function, think of, if you're adding that impact, that pressure down, if you're a runner. So really take your time, give yourself time to restore that function, to reconnect. I promise you will get there, but even if you might be in a hurry or be anxious to get back into those higher impact or heavy, heavy lifting, you wanna wait till that core, till your body is recovered, right? It takes a while, but Check out all of my other postnatal videos once you get there, all my prenatal videos here on the channel on Body Fit by Amy and Body Fit Moms. Check that out because I will guide you in that process, I promise. And of course, make sure you leave me a comment, leave me a like, let me know how this felt for you. Share this video and of course, don't forget to subscribe. If you're looking to take your journey to the next level, let's stretch those wrists. 
Join us over in the Body Fit Athletic Club and in the Body Fit Moms group. If you're gonna get that extra support from me, from the community, and all the little extras, we'd love to see you there. Oh, thank you so much for being here with me today again. Listen, I know how hard it is. Maybe you're feeling nauseous. Maybe you're throwing up. I was for a long time. Maybe you're just achy. Maybe you're just exhausted because we all are, especially if you have other kiddos at home. Maybe you're exhausted from work, whatever it is. You made the choice to show up today and that is no small feat. So please thank your body for that, for showing up for you. I'm thanking you for showing up with me. Know what a big deal that is that you are taking care of yourself, which means you're taking care of that baby and everybody else around you that you love and that loves you. Let's get one big deep breath in and out. You did it. That was your prenatal power workout. Great job, everybody.